You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. How many are ready to receive from the Lord this morning? It is my sincere prayer that I will be a blessing to you. And the word of the Lord will enrich your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Were you blessed yesterday night? I said, were you blessed? I'd like to pray for those who brought the seed of yesterday night. If you have the seed here, I'd like you to come forward quickly. I'd like to pray for you if you have the seed here. Praise the Lord. 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 Uncommon blessing on you, man. Uncommon grace. Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Everyone else, just come, just come, just come, just come. Blessing and favor on you. Jesus' name. New season. New season. Jesus' name. Be blessed. Be highly favored. Daddy, uncommon blessing, sir. Praise the Lord. Blessing and favor. Jesus' name. Be blessed, highly favored. Be blessed, highly favored. Testimony. Stress-free living from today. Jesus' name. Blessings on you in the name of Jesus. On common grace. On common health. I rebuke every attack on your body. I declare and decree shortness of breath. And every other health issue is no longer your portion. Jesus' name. Blessing on you. Jesus' name. Be blessed. Be highly favored. Jesus' name. Blessing. Testimony. Be blessed. On common grace. Jesus' name. Blessings on you favor blessing testimony follows you from today the oil of god rests on your work on your life in jesus name the lord bless you praise the lord favor and blessing on you jesus name above only always in jesus name blessings favor jesus name somebody praise the lord this morning praise the lord this morning hallelujah I'm going to be teaching this morning on how to go from broke to billionaire. But before I do so, I just wanted to share a few truths about the fact that God really wants to prosper you. He wants to increase you. He wants to show you favor. He wants you to experience grace beyond measure. It is my personal conviction that the body of Christ, God's desire for us is that we should prosper. That we should handle great wealth. Listen, there's a reaction out there against us when we teach people to experience financial grace. But if you notice, Satan reacts more when it comes to finance than to anything. He wants the church to be quiet as if he knows that when the church prospers, the church can carry out many things. Is somebody hearing me? And God wants to prosper us. I'm part of a crusade which I kept going for seven years. I think I've graduated now. I was going to this young man in Ghana. His name is Steve Mensah. He was the first person I ever saw holding the kind of crusade I desired to hold. When I went to Bible school and graduated 48 years ago, 1976, 46 years ago, something like that, and resumed in Shomulu Four Square. Uh, at that time, my denomination had an emphasis on pastoring, so they did not encourage evangelists. In my heart, I always wanted to hold crusades. So I went to, be pre to this young man in Ghana to preach for him on a regular basis. One day, they put the video of their crusades I had not seen anything like it. They would buy like six to ten trailers of food, rice, gari, beans, farming equipment, and distribute. The way it touches life is impactful. I believe that it is the body of Christ that can make that kind of difference. These guy, these people I'm talking about, not only will they have a day for medicals, they will also take over a hospital in town where some people will be operated upon free. Operated, full surgery, free. I believe the time has come for us to so prosper that we are able to do such a thing. That we are able to touch generations and minister. But you see, if you do not shift your mind 
if you do not shift the way you think, you will think that lack is something that honors God. Lack does not honor God. The only person who benefits from your lack is the devil. It is your prosperity that honors God. And if you want me to explain to you, I'll show you. There are 500 scriptures on faith. There are 300 scriptures on love. There are 150 scriptures on hope. There are 2,000 scriptures, direct and indirect, on finance. So it means that finance matters to God. 500 on, 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 on faith, 300 on love, 308 on love, 150 on hope. But when it comes to finance, direct and indirect, there are 2,000. Jesus spoke 60, he spoke 37 parables. 23 out of all the parables of Jesus had to do with finance. So it is his desire, it is his desire to prosper people. Many of the parables we preachers use to invite people to the altar are parables that have to do with finance. Parable of the 10 talents. It's not the talent to sink. Talent in the day of Jesus was like a gold bar. In fact, in today's money, the talent in the days of Jesus was worth 547 US dollars of today. So the man who was given one talent, he buried half a million dollars. Ogene. They give you half a million dollars, you buried it. Maybe you didn't know that all the uncle of Ali Kodangote gave him was half a million dollars with which he started. The same amount that was given to the prodigal son. It all depends on your attitude, your mind. So talent in Bible times is economics. The parable of the sower is money. The parable of even the prodigal son is money. The boy went for his inheritance before the father died. The parable of the lost sheep is about finance. The man left the capital to go and look for the profit. It's all about finance. When God puts money and finance in your hand, he wants you to be able to use it for the preaching of the gospel. Somebody say amen. He wants you to be able to use it to make a difference. But before I do the PowerPoints I want to do this morning, I want you to realize that the reason a large number of people are broke in our nation, and particularly in the church, is the mindset. Wealthy people have a different mindset from poverty mindset. Wealthy people have a different mindset from middle class people. There are three kinds of people. There's middle class, there's, there's poor people, and there's wealthy people. Middle class people, they have nice car. They have a nice house, but that's all. They cannot survive more than six months without a salary. Poor people, they don't even have anything. They are just struggling and living from day to day. Wealth is when you have a river, a stream that continues to bring abundance to you. Somebody say amen. But listen, your mindset can help you or it can hold you from wealth. Look at the parable of the talent. One was given five. Wealthy mindset turned it to ten. One was given two. A wealthy mindset turned it to four. The one who was given well, one talent, he took the one talent, he buried it. That's the mindset of a poor person, to hoard and not to multiply. So listen, if your mindset is wrong, you cannot increase wealth. Where you are today, this is a tough one to say, where you are today is a product of your way of thinking. Where you are. Two men in this city of Lagos had 25 million naira in 1986. I'd like you to say two men. Please say it louder. Two men. Two men in 1986 had 25 million naira. 
One of them was a musician. So he wanted to impress his friends. He built a massive house. That's all. The other one was a banker. He took the same 25 million naira and started a bank. That bank today is probably one of Nigeria's foremost. I'm tempted to say number one, or else people who work for the other bank will say, no, it's my own bank that's number one. So Jim Ovia and uh, Shino Peters both had 25 million naira in 1986. Shino Peters built a house to impress his friends. Jim Ovia denied himself, stayed in hunger, and used the money to start a bank. The rest is history. Zenith Bank has touched several nations. He has, so the mindset is the key to many things. About two years ago, I was in the same plane with Shino Peters. He's now flying economy. Because he did not multiply what was in his hands. Jim Obia doesn't even need to fly in any commercial plane. But the only time I've seen him was when we were in first class cabin together. Although first class don't mean say we have the same kind of money. Oh. But what I'm trying to show you is mindset. I like you to say mindset. So the man thought, let me impress my friends. He built the big house. And you know, even architecture changes. The house that was impressive in 1986 is not impressive today. It does, in fact, it looks ugly today. So if you must move to a higher level and enter your wealthy place, your old way of thinking must be dropped for a new way. And part of the keys to success is to raise the quality of your vision and your thinking. When you do, people will be naturally attracted to you to bless you and to make money come to you. You see, when you have the mindset of poverty, money flows away from you. That's why money is called currency. It flows away. When you have a mindset of wealth, money flows to you because you do the things that makes it to flow to you every day. That's why you find people who are wealth creators. They do things every day that make the wealth to come to them. This morning, we have limited time. So we're going to start our teaching by talking of a woman who found herself in a broke situation. She had nothing. She's lost everything. And they're about to take the only thing she had which was her children. And because that was all she had, she decided to cry out. In the book of 1 Kings, I believe chapter 4, 2 Kings chapter 4, we have the story of the woman who the Bible makes us to understand that she had nothing but her sons. They now came to take the sons and the woman cried out. She cried out. She knew that if they take the sons, everything is gone. Second Kings, if you have your Bible, please. Second Kings chapter 4, verse 1 to 7. Second Kings chapter 4, verse 1 to 7. Let me even say this. Second Kings chapter 4 is an interesting part, chapter. Verse 1 to 7 is a woman who had children, no money. Verse 8 to 17 is a woman who had money, no children. But both of them had the same God. One had money, no children. One had children, no money. We're going to look this morning at the one who had children and no money. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord. And the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be slaves. So Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me what do you have in the house? And she said, your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. 
Then he said, go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors. Empty vessels do not gather just a few. And when you come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons. Then pour it into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. So she went from him, shut the door behind her and her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured it out. You know, it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Then she came and told the man of God and he said, go sell the oil, pay your debt. You and your sons live on the rest. May God, on the rest. May God bless his word. I said, may God bless the, his word. How do you go from broke to a billionaire? Remember I said something about the mindset. Until you change your mindset, you will not be able to handle great wealth. So the first thing to do is to expect more from yourself. Expect more from yourself. Whether you went to school or didn't go to school, expect more from yourself. Whether you had great education or didn't have great education, expect more from yourself. The woman made up her mind that look, if I'm going to make a change, I can't sit down here and be crying and the uncles of my sons take advantage and say, uh, we the woman now have decided that uh, if you are going to be delivered from this, your poverty, and uh, you have to sleep with Uncle Joe and Uncle James and Uncle Jackson. The woman expected more of herself until you believe in your own destiny, gifting, and ability. No man can take you where you are not willing to go. I hope I'm making sense. I said, I hope I'm making sense. Expect more from yourself. Expect to succeed. Expect to, expect, believe that, look, every man is rated equal to have ability to succeed. So people remain broke when they don't expect more of themselves. And Christianity, one of the beauty of Christianity is that it tells you that you are created in the image of who? In the image of God. I was a Muslim. My name was Ahmed. One of the biggest challenge for me that made me step out of Islam and then give my life to Christ is the teaching of fatalism. Fatalism in Islam teaches that wherever you met yourself, that's how God planned it. So if you are broke, that's where you are meant to be. If you are blessed, that's where you are meant to be. And that's why you find that uh, people who are poor, who are beggars, in fact, I was raised in the north, I grew up in the north, I didn't leave the north until I was 14. I was almost 15 before I left the north. Couldn't speak Yoruba very well. Actually, my first language was Hausa, second language, English, third language, small Igbo, and then Yoruba. So in Hausa culture, because the Hausa culture is interwoven with Islam, you don't even know where Islam stops and the culture begins. When a beggar comes to you and he says, uh, Sadaka dan Allah, you will tell the beggar, Ale bamu ubaku. May God bless us so that we can bless you. But here in the south, the beggar will answer you, may God bless us together. I hope I'm making sense. So the culture, the teaching, makes the person to not expect much of himself. Whereas in Christianity, whether you are the lowest or the highest, you know that we were both created in the image of God. Oh, come on, somebody shout amen. amen. That's why the book of Proverbs says, the poor and the rich, the Lord God made them both. But he didn't say made them so. Never forget that statement. The poor and the rich, the Lord God made them both. But he didn't make them so. Men choose their status. They choose where they belong. So expect more of yourself. You can have two people come out from the same womb 
and one person decided to go for broke to believe more of themselves and so they begin to prosper so you see i don't know if you've met a lot of billionaires you'll be shocked that there really isn't anything unique to them other than their lifestyle some say lifestyle that directs into wealth creation uh, one time i was in the same first class cabin with ali kudanguti we were flying to london we left lagos 11 p.m it was a saturday night all the guys there are governors these that usually the first class cabin has 14 people before the plane took off, they were all asleep. Shaking the plane with their snoring. Aliko Dangote did not sleep. He was studying the note for the meeting he was going to. At that time, it was worth like $5 billion. I don't know if you know how much $5 billion is. $5 billion is you stacking one $1 note for 67 miles. That's one billion. You stack one one dollar note from here to Abekuta. That's just one. And he has five at that time. These guys who are me, millionaires, they were sleeping. But he was studying his notes. That is the dividing point between the wealthy and the poor. Their approach to doing things. Because we need to also wake up Christians in the church. Who think because they have fasted, the breakthrough will come? We also need to wake the man who thought because he had given the tithe, the breakthrough will come. We need to balance in the church that wealth creation is like the pendulum of a grandfather clock. You must apply two things, principles and power. Principles and power. In the church, we teach power, power, power. Motivational guys outside teach principle, principle, principle. In a church like this, we have the blessing of revelation in trend that makes us to understand principle and power. And as you combine both, you will succeed. And you will do well. But you must expect more of yourself. The second thing I like to say, is not only to expect more of yourself, but to express yourself express yourself express your dream express your vision what do you want to do what do you want to achieve where do you want to go even if you don't have the money i was a young pastor in this lagos then i left for london while in london the church just started and then eventually i stepped out of the denomination i belong and started krcc one time I came to Nigeria, and I know in fact when I was still a denominational pastor, I told my pastor in Nigeria that one day we'll have a church on the Korodu Road. He looked at me like, how can it be? Korodu Road is built up. It was my expression. I believed in my expression. At that time, the Korodu Road was like the champion of all the roads in Lagos. And so I kept confessing. One day on the Korodu Road, we will have a presence. And truly, as I kept dreaming it, believing it, and trusting God for it, the chance opened. Some people who started a business packed up, they want to sell a four-acre site with a 34-room office and three warehouses. And so we paid for it and bought it with money transferred from KICC London. Expressing yourself means you see it even when others don't see it. You believe it even when others don't believe in you. The third thing is to examine yourself. What's holding me? What can limit me in wealth creation? Let me not stay here. If you look at examining yourself in 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 2. So Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? And she said, your maid servant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. She had to examine herself 
and face her reality. Yeah, we teach the confession of faith. But you have to face the reality and see what you have right now. What do I have with which I can start to get out of broke into blessing? Because what you have is a beginning point. God has to bless something. Say with me, God has to bless something. No, you can't create, you can't create something out of nothing. Only God has that power. And we only read of that once in the Bible. Genesis 1 1. Bereshith Barach Elohim. In the beginning, Elohim. Barach to Barach is to create out of nothing. But after that, everything he created was out of something. The Bible says, and God made man out of the dust of the earth. Asher is the Hebrew word to create out of something. Everything around you is out of something. The microphone in my hand is crude oil that became microphone. This was a tree in the bush. The shirt I'm wearing was once cotton upon a tree. Asher. So you must be ready to look for what you can turn to a source of money. So the man of God asked her, what do you have? She had to examine. A challenge with many young people in the country of Nigeria and there I say Africa, is that they do not realize that their degree is only a foundation. It is not probably where your wealth will be. Some people are medical doctors by training, but real estate by calling. Is someone hearing me? We have a young lady in KICC, London. I teach a lot about you owning property. I teach a lot. I teach a lot about real estate because real estate is the only estate that is real. Every other estate is not real. As a result, this young lady, her first name is Agnes. I do not know anyone, including me, in our church who have her property. Agnes now has 100 houses in London. Ogene. I mean, I teach it, but she has the anointing. I think that should be transfer. She has 100 houses. Lord, let's just imagine that each house have now given her just, just 50,000 profits. Profit times 100. That's 5 million pounds. She could not make it until she retires in medicine. You have to examine what is my gifting. Every man God called to solve a problem in the Bible, God started with what's in his hand. David, a stone. Moses, a stick. Praise God. Somebody in this house is about to prosper. I say you're about to prosper. Number four, you must seek a turnaround. I like you to say turn around. You must seek a turn around. So the woman examines herself. She sees that there is a challenge. There is a battle. They are about to take her sons. Seek a turn around. And by seeking a turn around, you need to look everywhere. Don't be satisfied with where you are. Do not be satisfied. Seek a turn around. She looked everywhere. And when she finally couldn't find answers, Anywhere she went to her man of God. In other words, know where to go when you don't know what to do. Know where to go when you don't know what to do. Know where to go when you don't know what to do. She looked everywhere. She was not satisfied. She had examined herself. And she knew she's in trouble. They are about to take her sons as indentured slaves in Yoruba culture. Indentured slavery means that your sons are part-time slaves. What is part-time slave? You borrowed money. They will take your children as guarantee for you paying the money. When they take the children, they will not come to the house of the man who lent the money and sit down 
and be eaten. No, they are used as slaves until the day you came to pay. It was the same as Hebrew culture also. Her sons are about to be taken away. Now, death has entered her house, killed her husband, made her a widow, broke her heart. The same woman who followed the coffin of her husband is now about to see her sons taken away. And they've carried everything away. So she became a person who sought for a turnaround. I pray for somebody here today. You will not accommodate problem. You will not accommodate lack. You will find a turnaround. Please shout amen with power. Because one of the greatest challenges when it comes to stepping out of broke into blessing is that people don't seek turnaround. They just seek for quick solution and just stay where they are. And they blame all sorts. They blame everyone. They blame situation. They blame Satan. Christians are world champions at blaming Satan for what he does not know about. Ah, they say the devil did it to me. Listen, let me mess up your theology. Satan does not know you. You say, what are you talking about? Satan doesn't know you and he has never been to you in your life. Hey, you say, which teacher did they bring this time? Satan has never in your life visited you. And you say, prove it in the Bible. I will. Satan has never, never visited you because you are not his level. Satan only showed up four times in the Bible when he didn't want to send small demons. Who are the four people Satan showed up to? You tell me. Number one. Huh? Adam and Eve. One. Number two. Job. Two. He didn't even show up to Abraham. Oh, by the way, you need to know that Job is supposed to be in the middle of Genesis because Job was the mentor of Abraham. And Satan did not show to Abraham. It was Job that is his level. Number three, give me another one. Huh? Jesus. He showed up to Jesus. Number four. Yeah, Paul said, uh, no, Paul didn't say the devil. He said, a messenger. A messenger. So many people are blaming the devil when he's just in CMC trouble. I don't even know her. I don't know her address. He's a fallen spirit, but he was an archangel. So there are many people who are blaming Satan for what he did not bring to their doorstep. Seek the turnaround if you want to come out of broke. Look everywhere. Don't be satisfied. Look everywhere. There are answers somewhere. Do you know that in this Lagos, the money in selling sand, 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 oh, you can't make it as a bank manager. We have a little estate we are trying to develop on Lake Yakwe Express. We are about to build something Nigeria has never seen. One and a half acres of our estate is going to be like Dubai Marina. Just water with lights inside it. And, and the water dances to music. The water will shoot 10 meters. And the water will become like a screen which you can project videos on. You come with your son, your daughter. They, you didn't know they paid us. You just see, happy birthday, mommy and daddy of Konko, and they'll be wondering, how did they get our name? And it'll be projected on the water. Now, some of the work we are doing, we have 28 roads in the estate. The contractor who is building the 28 roads have contracted it to people to bring in trucks of sand because we're building a road so that the estate is never flooded. One truck of sand is 65,000 naira. 
I called the contractor. I said, look, these two people have been nice to me as son and daughter. Just give them the chance to supply the sand. Those ones, they don't even know the owner of the truck. They don't know where they get the sand. But for every truck delivered, they are getting just 5,000 5, naira. So some days they deliver 100 trucks. Times 5,000 naira, how much is that? So when you are making 500,000 naira every day, I don't know how many bankers make that every day. That is Sando. Now, the owner of the truck, you cannot believe, they are charging 25,000 naira to drive the truck to your site. So many of them don't wear suit and tie. But they are getting breakthroughs. Because the challenge with many people is that they do not seek the turnaround. They focus on where they are. So let me take you to number five. Seek the treasure. There is a treasure near you. So the man of God has a what do you have in your house? So if you want to move from broke to billionaire, you have to look for your treasure. There is a treasure somewhere in your life. There is a gift. There is an ability. There is something you know. There is something you can do. Seek for the treasure. What do you have in your house? What shall I do for you? Tell me. What do you have in your house? I like you to say there's a treasure in my house. If I change it and say there's a miracle in my house. I like you to say it like you really believe there's a miracle in my house. I like you to look at 2023. And you are speaking to January to December. And you are saying there is a miracle in my house. This woman is in dire, dire strait. He said, what do you have in your house? God never works with nothing. He has to find something. There is a treasure. Some of us, we can write. Some of us, we are beautiful. You can model. There's a, there are people who model just their nails. And they are making more money than you can make in salary. There are those who model just their eyes. A cameraman was passing through Afghanistan one time and he captured a girl, an Arab girl with blue eyes and it was on Geography Channel. The thing created a global sensation. They went to look for her. They went to look for her. Unfortunately, by the time the Taliban have taken over and commanded every woman to cover their face. God... God help us from all those religious people who have no purpose other than to destroy women. They couldn't find her. By the time they found her, one cheap baker have pregnated her. She's given birth to like three children. Before they found her, once they say, we are looking for a girl with blue eyes. They want to use her in America to make millions. Every woman in Afghanistan became blue eyed. There's a treasure in your house. There's a treasure in your house. There's a treasure in your house. He said, what do you have in your house? So listen to me again. I, I, I'm, I'm doing this teaching because it's the only way to encapsulate many things I will have taught. The problem with many people is that they think the treasure is in the job. I just came from Lekki. Every 5 a.m., the road to Lekki is jammed. People are driving to work. Every 4 p.m., the road from Lake is jammed. People are coming from work. Wake up in the morning, rush to work, come back home, have some food, watch television, go to bed. Wake up in the morning, rush to work, come back home, have some food, watch television, go to bed. Wake up in the morning, rush to work, come back home, have some food, watch television. Then one day your hair will be full of gray like my own. Or more blessed like my brother who seated there. Praise God. Yes, he deserves to be called our father in the Lord. <laughs> Look at me. And many do not. I land in Nigeria. Sometimes I fly virgin. So when you land virgin by 5 a.m., 
5 a.m. Nigerian road is jammed. Everybody is going to work. And people have never sat down to say to themselves, Nigeria today, 2022, November 21, there is not one single person, one, on a salary of a million dollars. If you have one, show me. The salary of the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, official, 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 is one million and thirty-six thousand naira every month. Of course, there are other amenities, which is a smart way to manage tax, but there is none. Not the CEO of all the banks. Next time, Google and look for the salary of the CEO of Zenith, UBA, Access, at least those are the three biggest. No one earns a million dollars. But when you step out of here, some men have found treasure of a million dollars in doing the simplest thing. I just repainted my house. I live in an estate in Lekki. I live in a small house somewhere there. And uh, every two years, I repaint my house. The guys who put the scaffolding, they charge 100000 a week. And they do about 10 houses a week. 100000 times 10, how much is that? 1 million. If they do that for 52 weeks, how much is that? 52 million. This guy, his name is Taju. He can't speak English. And he brings it in a broken vehicle that has a mind of its own. The illustration I even gave you is not correct. I just remembered now that <laughs> the paint was 4.3 million because it's a high-end paint. And the uh, scaffolding and the laborers is 1.5 million. It's like building another house. Now only outside they paint to, if they paint inside, what did they go do? This guy, out of that 6 million, about 1.5 million is going to touch you. And he's going to make that in 10 houses every week. Because the house was painted within a week. 1.5 million times 10. How much is that? 15 million naira every week. Taju did not finish. I mean, the secondary school he must have gone was one of those uh, Amadia, uh, Sakati Nubu Secondary School, Okyodu. They knew where the treasure is. Open your hands. There's a treasure close to you, connected from today. I say you will discover the treasure. You will enjoy the treasure. You will break out of limitation. You will prosper in Jesus' name. Shout a big amen. A thing is called a treasure because it's not common to every man. When I finished building my house, the architect said, there's a company that uses a chemical can't remember the name now. If I remember, I'll mention it. They'll come and spray it on the floor of your house. Because my house is one of these uh, contemporary houses, which everything is just square, flat, 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 flat. And so they'll spray it. So even if rain falls on your house, hey, don't put my, uh, my PowerPoint yet on the Lambdale. <laughs> All right. So they'll spray it, and what they spray will thicken and become like paper. It will protect your house from algae. There'll be nothing growing around your house for 15 years. And they'll charge you 3 million. They do about 20 houses a week. 20 times 3. Please answer me. 60 million every week, even if it's every other week. Many of us don't know there are treasures somewhere. Again, open your hands. I prophesy into your life. The treasure connected to your life is coming into your hands. You are stepping out of broke. You are stepping into a new season. I want you to know you are not junk. You carry value. You are an achiever. So, see your treasure. See it. You are not junk. That's why the man of God Others will have looked at the widow and said, hey, sorry, madam. He saw treasure. He said, you are not drunk, madam. You carry something. What do you 
harm in your house because you are an achiever. For you to enter billions from broke, number six, you need to submit to a teacher. Submit to a teacher. In other words, you need to go and get something. Submit to a teacher. Somebody say, submit to a teacher. Please say it louder, submit to a teacher. What does submitting to a teacher mean? It means borrowing ideas. Getting something from somewhere that changes the way you think, the way you talk, the way you imagine, the way you see. Borrow commercial money. Submit to a teacher. Submit. The man of God told the woman, go and borrow ideas. Go and borrow commercial money. Amen? Oh, please say a better amen. amen. Say another amen. amen. I am one Nigerian Bible teacher who will tell you the church was wrong to tell you that all borrowing is a sin. If you are borrowing to waste, it is wrong. But there are contracts you cannot do in Nigeria if you don't know how to take commercial borrowing. That's why we're broke. Because preachers tell us not to borrow. The road construction, if you don't borrow, you can't carry it out. In fact, in borrowing, it's called dilution. You need to dilute your money with other people's money. You want to know the chief borrower in Nigeria? Dangote. Every morning when the banks wake up, then they pray for Ramo, make no die. Because if that man die, trouble go day. He don't borrow, 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 borrow. You know they're using own money. Now your money they use. All of them are put on our money for shavings account. And they shave you every day. You put your Christians. Christians don't like risk. 90% of all of us who are here today, our money is in shavings account. And they only put 1% or how many percent are they giving you? Huh? Four and a half. Fantastic. But do you know how much they are borrowing it out? 27. So they, they give you five. They, they, and they borrow it out 27. Nigeria is even good. They are giving you four and a half percent. In England, they give you half a percent when you leave your money in shavings account. So Christians do not realize that you may need to go and borrow to, to amplify what is in your hand. So the man of God told her the miracle coming, what you have in your house cannot handle it. Oh, I believe that person is here. The breakthrough coming, what you have in your house cannot handle it. There's a miracle coming. There's a favor coming. So if they give you contract to build a road, if they give you contract to be the one to do the fourth mainland bridge, what would you do? Put your hand in your pocket and be looking for the money. Or say, if we're not advancing, I'm not going to build they will give someone else. There is a miracle in your house. But you got to learn to submit to the teacher to know the power of borrowing for multiplication. Don't borrow to buy property, to buy, to buy furniture. Don't borrow to make your house look good. Don't borrow to wear clothes. You borrow to buy property that will increase in value. When you hear people have houses in Europe, in America, it's because they took a mortgage so as they took the mortgage, the equity in the house begins to increase. If they sold the house today and returned the money of the person who loaned them, they have a profit they have made. I pray for you today. Not only money, ideas you borrow will work for you. Wisdom you borrow will work for you. You need to borrow idea. If you are a pastor, you came into this hall, you need to borrow vessels. You need to borrow the way the, everywhere was set up. Some people, they have an attitude. They don't borrow. 
They don't look at places, write it down. I say, okay. Now I see how they set their speakers, how they set their microphone, the kind of microphone they are using. You go and buy a microphone that they are selling by the roadside for 50 naira. And the thing is dying and waking up. And you are slapping the mic and rebuking the devil. Satan no know you. He has never been to your church. You are not his level. It's small demons that are worrying you. And one of the demons worrying you is the demons of carelessness. Borrow vessels and you come out of poverty. I hope somebody's hearing me. When I say submit to a teacher, I'm saying if you have to change the way you think, if daddy teaches on finance, buy all the tapes. Remove all the music in your, in your car. That's all you should be playing. I know we Christians, we love to listen to all the gospel music. Fantastic. Create seasons for music. Create seasons for word. I was in New Jersey airport about 15 years ago. And they were selling the audio tape of a woman who teaches on finance, Susie Orman. At that time, the tape was $10 each. That's too expensive. At that time, tape, not be CDO, not be MP3 or MP4. Tape used to be $3. Her own was $10. But the content is invaluable. The whole uh, nine tapes, 10 tapes they were selling that day was $90. 15 years ago, I quickly bought it. One time, before he became my friend, Dr. Mike Murdoch came to London to speak somewhere. First time I'll see him, I had bought his first book when I went to Dallas. And I had not invited him. We have not become friends. When I heard he was coming to some place in London, those ones did not publicize it. Only about 50 people or 40 people came. When I got there, all the books he came, I bought everything he has because I needed to submit to somebody who has been where I have not yet been. Somebody's story is changing. One of the reasons you find that people who come from the East prosper in business is because the guy who goes to study his master, he didn't waste time in some theory of economics with the professor himself is broke. 90% of Nigerian professors are broke. Don't put it on social media. That's why you'll be on strike all the time. And I'll go and write it down that Pastor Matthew said it. After this strike, there'll be another strike. The only day strike will stop is the day government removed their hand from university. And university becomes a business. Because the people who brought university to us, United Kingdom, no university in the UK belongs to the government, including Oxford. So the lecturers now know we need to work to make money. Work and eat. Then you'll be better for the students. The Nigerian students will stop deceiving themselves. You are reading medicine and you are paying 50,000 naira to read medicine. Make I ask you, the man will go England, go study medicine, pay 32,000 pounds per year. And the one will pay 50,000 naira. Who you go want make a chuku injection? We live in... And when they ask those students that the school fee is going to be more than 50,000 naira, they will block the road. They say, senators are collecting money. We have a lopsided system. Lopsided. Lopsided. So until you submit to a teacher who teaches your mindset to change, you remain on the same spot. I came from a family of poverty. They thought the only way to prosper is hard work. They didn't know it's smart work. Today, may the spirit of grace and smartness rest on your life. Change your level. Shout amen with power. I hope you are getting something from this. Number seven, select your team. Once you have a teacher that's teaching you to borrow ideas, borrow commercial money, borrow vessels like this church now, borrow vessels, borrow something you saw here, borrow the way they do things, 
Borrow even the way the cars are parked. Borrow the way the screen looks. Borrow vessels. Borrow, take it. When we opened our church in Prayer City in London, the guest speaker at the opening was my friend Bishop Jakes. When he came, he saw that our platform was so completely different from what he's doing in America because the Lord spoke to me when I was watching American Idol to do a platform that doesn't look church. Change all the lights. Bishop Jake told his boys to be taking photo of everything. They took photo of everything. Next time I went to speak for him, uh -uh, this stage looked like our church. I thought, am I in our church? Borrow, don't be too proud. The man of God told the woman, go and borrow. Do you know the humiliation of a woman going to borrow purse from other women? Particularly when they've been carrying stories about you. Maybe now she killed her husband. Who, and now you go and knock on the door. Can I borrow your pot? And they want a pot. Where do you know they cook? When I pass three for that house, you and your sons. So just borrow me. You need to go down to come up. You need to humble yourself to rise. Humble yourself in order to rise. There is a rising coming. I said there's a rise in coming. You will not stay down. Shout amen with power. Then number seven, select your team. After this, he told her, you and your sons. Not everyone is connected to your dream. Not everyone sees what you see. Not everyone feels what you feel. So if you want to build and if you want to create wealth, and enter the realms of billions. I'm not talking millions. You need to have the right kind of people around you. Look at me, look at me, look at me. If I know the five people you are close to, I can tell you what your life is. Because you like it or not, the five people close to you are shaping your life. Look at the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria or the president of the Federal Republic of Ghana, or the prime minister of the United Kingdom. Even their wife or husband is part of the policy of the nation. Sometimes when I see one prime minister, we had Boris Johnson. Sometimes when I see some of his antecedents, I knew it is that young girl he just married. In the past... 11 months in the United Kingdom, we have had the most immature government. Three immature governments. So you want to go far? Surround yourself with people who see where you are going. You can't put around you the wrong team to create wealth. It's not possible. You can't keep listening to the wrong kind of people who say, me, I just, I just believe K zira, zira. whatever will be, will be. If you have K-Zira, Zira people around you, sack them. Did you hear me? I said, did you hear me? Sack them. And if you don't know how to sack them, let me tell you why you should be able to sack them. God has never created a planet he cannot control. Is there any planet in the sky that's out of control? Everyone is staying in its own constellation. Have the right team. Choose who runs with you. Choose who runs with you. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you. You and your sons. And Paul, choose. You want to create wealth? If you have four sons, don't hand over your business to firstborn. I need to shout it on the housetop, on the roof of this church. Don't hand over your business to firstborn. Hand it over to first able. The first who is able to manage it. And if it's your daughter, I have a whole teaching on why women should emerge to control wealth. Because there is a, there is a, there is a, there's an evil discrimination against women. Why are they passing family wealth to the girl? They say, because she will marry and go. Was she a choice to be a girl? What is wrong if she carries some of the wealth to where she's going and bless your grandchildren? And so you see some of our boards. Twelve people will be on the board, one woman. 
One woman. And did you know that last week the world became 8 billion? Last week. And 49.6% of the population of the earth is women, which is almost 50 50. But how many boards have you seen 50 50? Things have to change. Have the right team. Because sometimes the right team may be a woman. The right player may be a woman. She's the one who sees what you see. Who feels what you feel. Who hears what you hear. Oh, I pray for somebody here. Destiny is changing for you. Choose who you run with if you are going to create wealth. You can't run with everybody. Not everyone sees what you see or feels what you feel. And not everyone follows you with a, an unselfish attitude. She had to go with her sons. And then show them what to do. And give them a plan. Show them what to do. Give them a plan. You want to create wealth? Do you know what you want to do yourself? That's why we say you should start with a teacher. Who taught you what to do. Who taught you how to do it. Who taught you how to create wealth. And then after you've learned it. Look for a team. Create a team around you. Give them a plan. This is where we're going. This is what we want to achieve. This is how we want to do it. I see somebody prospering. I said, I see you prospering. Number eight. Number eight. Select your streams. Select your streams. There are multiple streams that can bring income to you. If you are hearing me today, wherever you are in this building, Hardly do you see anybody who creates billions who depends on only one stream. The problem with many of us is that the only thing we know is salary. That's why by the middle of the month, we are shaking. That's why sometimes some of our bosses have been abusive, but we cannot talk. We need the salary. Whereas if you have many streams, you have a shop somewhere bringing money. You have a place somewhere where you teach something. You have another place where you have some, some, some shares. You have another business where you are a partner. So you have many streams. God created how many streams in the Garden of Eden? How many people were living there at that time? How can you give two people four streams? Because God was teaching us multiple streams of income. And each of those streams, Gaihon means sweet river. Paison means free flow. Hidekel means rapid like an arrow. While Euphrates means breakthrough. So God is saying there are four kinds of streams of money. There is sweet river. The one that is sweet. It's not much, but whenever it comes, it is sweet. Then there is one that is, that is free flow. It is always flowing. Thank you very much for rescuing me from a sweat. There's the one that is free flow. Then there's number three that is rapid like an arrow. It doesn't come all the time. But when God shoots you that arrow of blessing, eh? Again, eh? They then go hit you, bam. Everybody says, go no say you are blessed. That is Hidekel. But then Euphrates, from which we get Perez, from which we get Fares, Euphrates, Euphrates, or when God told that man, Many, many take God spoke outside to him. Menene, menene, what are you doing in that place? <laughs> so, <laughs> Perez or Euphrates means breakthrough. Somebody's breaking through this morning. Shout a powerful amen. Yeah. Select your streams. How do you I know my streams? There are some things you are passionate about. Do you know some people, they love to cook. Turn it to your power. Turn it to your power. Some people love to bake. Turn it to your power. And when you start baking, look at me, look at me. You cannot prosper with one shop. That's the problem of many of us in the church. You need to scale. Somebody say scale. Say it louder, scale. You will never see a baba who is a millionaire unless he has scaled. You will never see a hairdresser who is a billionaire unless she has scaled? How do you scale Barbie? How do you scale uh, hairdressing? By having 
20 of the same shop in Lagos. So if the shop is called Hibiscus Barbers, Hibiscus Ikeja, Hibiscus uh, Marina, Hibiscus Festa, Hibiscus Lucky One, Lucky Two, Lucky Three, Hibiscus uh, Okokomaiko. Lagos has 22 million people. Imagine if you have 10 hibiscus and they are corporate hairdressers. In fact, there's a, there's a hair barbing salon on the way to my house in Lekki. The guys are in Thai and, and in their, what do we call those things that hold your trousers again? Suspenders. They are suspenders. They are, they are bow tie. They look so nice. If it were not that I have a barber that comes to my house to cut for me, man, that's the place I like to go. The guys look so nice. They look so corporate. They have, a, they have somebody to welcome you just to cut hair. This is barbing with style. You know, that's the reason many people who sell food don't realize that what people buy is not the food, it's the atmosphere. Because mal and way they sell chicken and KFC, chicken na chicken. But price is different because of atmosphere. If na mala one way they drive fly, na chicken you go buy. I mean, I ate in a restaurant yesterday after service in Lekki before coming here. The food nearly put me in trouble. When I looked my watch, I was almost late. I said, Ah, Papa, go 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 eat me raw today. I run. Run out of the place. Was a restaurant on seven floors overlooking the, the Atlantic, right behind uh, Eco Atlantic, and they brought the a, a, a lamb shank. Hey, I said this one a lamb. Now just go kill lamb. But you see, the same lamb where then they serve me. Now you go call a outside. Where then they roast for corner side. The amount where we pay for that shank, it go buy a whole goat. It is the atmosphere and scaling. Someone says scaling. So those guys on the road to my house, if they had 10 in Lagos, oh boy. Oh boy. And it doesn't have to be your specialism. The three sweet spots on the way to my house have too many cars parked in the evening and not one sweet spot belongs to a house a man. Is somebody from Asia Mobiato, another one from India Kuotolo, that owns the, the sweet spot because they know the power of they don't come from sweet community but they know what people need and so they created like 10 every night one of those spots makes a million naira. Those lucky boys, the way then they spend, God save us all. Okay, the way then they spend, no be joke. Oh. And then the guy has three there. In another corner of lucky, he has another three. In another corner of lucky, he has another three. So he's making three million on each street. Three million on each street. He has to go, come see money for him. And they say, how did you make the money? Where did you go? You know, we need to change in this nation. We put guys who are fresh graduates from the university to be heads of major corporations who do not fully understand the power of business. Not everybody is a thief. You will do well. I hope I'm making sense this morning because you are very quiet. Praise God. Select your stream. Not just streams. Streams. Select your streams. One of my streams is real estate. So 32 years ago, I started to gather land in the place called Moway. How many have heard of Moway? Everybody. I became the largest landowner in Moway until the kings there got angry. That's now your own problem now. I buy them. About 900 acres. About 900 acres. My land starts from Moway and gets to our father and gets to Papa Lanto. 900. Now I'm selling. 
Now, what you bought 32 years ago, how much do you think I'm selling it? Ogene. Ogene. And because I did that, I had no house in Lagos. Never had a house. Whenever I came, I stayed in Sheraton. Then later, we rented an apartment in, in uh, GRA. Then later, we built a quick house somewhere in Okwebi. Quick, 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 six months, we built it. Did not quickly buy a house. Multiplied the value of the money. Because I was the largest, I was the biggest Christian bookshop in Nigeria at the time. Matison Media. I was representing 30 publishing houses. When money could not be taken out of Nigeria, I was the only one bringing books. So that's one stream. In fact, just from Kenneth Hagin's ministry, my bookshop will buy $50,000 books. And we're talking 30 publishers. Nelson Bibles will buy $160,000. Not to talk about a Kenyon will buy $25,000. So when we brought all these books, there was no way to take the money out. We began to buy land. So bought 900 acres in Moe and bought them at something like 100,000 naira for an acre. So today we're selling it somewhere between 5 and 15 million per acre. Five, the cheapest we sold was 5 million four years ago. Now we're selling them 12 to 15. But we bought it 100,000. What percentage is that? Scaling. On the Lake Equa Express, we're right now developing an estate. We own 88 acres. Amonile wasted our time in court for nine years. But when it was over, God told me it was good they wasted your time. The value has suddenly exploded, scaling. So now we're putting road networks. That's why you're not hearing about us. We want it to be such that people want, want to create another Ikoi away from Ikoi. Scaling. So look for your streams. Streams. And with those streams, you are able to do things. I was able to bless my sons with their own house on their wedding day. And now my grandchildren, four of them, I pay their school fees. I told my children, don't pay. I don't want you to send my grandchildren to uh, Sakati Nubu School. So even in England, I pay my grandchildren's school fee. All four is equal to 60,000 pounds a year for the school fees. And then I'm buying properties and putting in a trust for my grandchildren. So I'm paying for 20 right now. These grandchildren are only seven, six, four, and three, old, and they already own 20 houses. So the three-year-old owns five houses. She don't even know anything more than chocolate, and she owns five houses. You want to know why? My father always made us live in the worst houses on earth. Worst. Any house nobody won't live in. That's where we stayed in. This generation was better the next. And the next. The Bible didn't say I should bless my children. It says I should leave an inheritance for who? So the vision is not even 20 houses but 100. In a trust. And the 100 houses they can't sell. I'll put a ring around it. You can enjoy the benefit. But your own children too should come and enjoy it. And your grandchildren too must come and enjoy it. So, select your streams. Let me finish. I think I'm taking too long. Uh, so, the Bible says, then he said, go borrow vessels from where? Everywhere. From your neighbors. Empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. Do not gather just a few streams 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 i've sold 10 million books of my own books that's a stream that's a stream the land that's a stream that's a stream 
We built some of it and we sold. That's a stream. That's a stream. I teach what I'm teaching you today for free. Some people are paying me 200 pounds every month to teach them in something called the wealth master class. They pay every month. So I teach them two times a month. About 200 of them. So do the maths. They each pay 200 pounds a month. And then there's a class of 10 of them that pay seven and a half thousand pounds a year for me to talk to them one on one for one hour every month. I just talk to them for one hour. I take their business, teach them how to change it, how to scale their business. So this one where they teach, no be free. Oh. I teach them, they pay. Scale. How did this all start? I decided to look for the teachers that would change the way I think. Some of the things that were inside me, I didn't know why they were there. It was later I was beginning to see. You see, if a man is teaching you a lot about finance, he has known poverty. Did you hear me? Oh, he has known poverty. We were so poor, eh? Poor people used to call us poor. Ah, we're so poor. We're so poor. My brother is in, the, in our university in my hometown. He's our chief security officer. We're so poor. One day he found something white. And he said, open your mouth, open your mouth. Eyes block, eyes block. I open. It was a broken bottle. We're so poor. We don't see eyes. We don't see eyes. We don't see eyes. But I see you lifted. Shout a big amen. Number nine, systematize the task. Systematize the task. What does this mean? Create automation. Look at the scaling I said about the barber shop. Imagine if the barber shop, I told you, have suspenders, bow tie, white shirt, black trouser, nice looking, all of them, right person to open, and the shop is always full. Always, in fact, weekends, they have crowd. Now imagine, what did they do? They created automation. <laughs> the man who even sells the suya, whom I told you is from Asia, Mobiato, he noticed that some guys are doing him a quick one. He has automation there. You can transfer your money before you come to collect your suya. Automation don't enter suya. Hey, you can come there. You have already done the transfer. And you came with a code. And say, hey, my code is 515. Okay, 515. They give you your suya. Many of us in church but still after you finish speaking in tongues systematize your dream God automated the rising of the sun and the setting when you woke up this morning did the sun rise or not he rose will it set or not well technically we now know in geography that the sun doesn't rise doesn't set is the earth that is rotating around the axis of the sun but it looks like sunrise sunset God has never woken up one day. You woke up one day, the sun is not there. Rather, it's showing up in the, in the west. It's ah, uh, what did happen? No, it's an automation. He commanded, and it is as he said it will be. Put things on automation. On systems that just work. Systems that just work. May God favor somebody today. Someone in this house. Listen, those my friends who own shops where you're selling chemicals, you're selling cement, you're selling uh, building materials. You know, all those things we have in all those Nollywood films. They bring out your book. And hey, how many fridges do we have? Your boys will be stealing from you. Automatize everything. Create system. The man of God told this woman to create a system. Borrow vessels. Be filling the vessel. One person is a borrower. One person is the filler. She is the one to be in the place of the miracle. The person who is thinking the ideas. Create automation. God also creates automation. And as they were doing it, it was increasing. You also need to create automation around your business or else you can't live in one shop. You can't live in one shop. But as if it's on automation. <laughs> you want to know how many McDonald's outlets there are in the world? 
25,000. 25,000. What does McDonald's say? The same bread and, and uh, burger everywhere. Same thing, but automated and scaled. What does KFC say? The same chicken and the same... Um, what do they put around it now? Huh? The flavor. The same flavor. Anywhere you eat KFC is the same, but they scaled it. I lay hand on someone here today, and I pray that the four corners of the earth will respond to you. God will cause your blessing to be seen in the rising of the west, in the rising of the sun, and the going down of it. The north and the south will answer to you. There will be a change to your story. They don't know you now, but the world will know you. They haven't heard of you now, but the world will hear of you. Shout amen with power. Yeah. Automation, automation, scaling. Did you know that the Chinese have copied our Ankara and they've gone to scale it? They've gone to maximize it. As a result, they can sell it cheaper than the person who is making it here. Number 10, I think I have 13 points and I'm going to finish now. Number 10, sell, 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 sell. Listen, 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 listen. If you are a person who is into buy, 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 you cannot become a billionaire. One of the problems of Africa is not just the mismanagement of income, but the fact that we do not have anything we produce to sell. Sell, sell, sell. Sell, sell, sell. Look for something to sell. Sell your idea. Sell your concept. Look at me. If you are fantastic with raising children, sell the idea, create your own blog, create your own um, uh, YouTube channel, create your own TikTok. Ah, I'm a big TikTok person. I like when I want to laugh. TikTok makes me laugh a lot. But you cannot believe people are selling things on TikTok. They are selling on YouTube. Yeah. The biggest place to sell now is not one shop somewhere in one corner. And you sit down with the shop and you are waiting for customers. When you can take the same thing, put it on YouTube, put $10 or $20 and say, I want the people just in Ikeja to see it. That is called segmentation. Segmentation is when you segment who you want to see it. You want to advertise uh, uh, Kingdom Life Conference? You don't have to advertise it to the whole world. You can just say, let Lagos fill the advert on YouTube. And you put $200. They may not see it in Ghana, but Lagos, anybody who opened a phone, Kingdom Life. They open their TV, Kingdom Life. Praise God. Oh, come on, somebody shout a bigger amen. amen. So, listen. You've got to sell, sell, sell. You cannot create wealth by releasing money, releasing money, releasing money. I kept those land in my way for long. I just kept praying for the time to sell. When the first group came, I did what they had never seen. It was a tough time. I need to sell. They don't have all the money. I shocked them. I said, I give you four months moratorium. Jump on the land. Begin to sell. Don't pay until four months. The boys almost collapsed. They said, we have never seen anybody like you. Thank you very much. And after four months, of course, the collector came. I was ready to collect. The one went no pay me on time. I just go close his estate. There's nothing like man of God. This one is God of man. You know, because people will blackmail you. I gave you four months moratorium. I sold it to you very low. You can't they play with my money. Ah. 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 Yoruba say, Edato badi ye otoshi. You go steal poor man chicken. Everybody go here. Yeah. Praise God. But you see, sell, sell, sell. And one of the blessings I had was that as the world was going into shutdown at COVID, these boys paid me large money. And the Holy Ghost said, change it to dollar. Eh? So I changed it at 360. And I have not yet spent it. You know the results now. I shouldn't talk about that one. So I can get home safely. 
Even if you want to stop me, I carry on police come. Sell, sell, sell. Look for something to sell. Sell concepts. Sell ideas. Do you know that your lawyer is selling his skill? Architects sell. But raise your selling capacity. Sell. Don't just go look for any job. People will pay you based on value. Don't sell your time. Don't sell your time. Don't sell your time. Don't sell your time. The people who jam our traffic every morning are selling time, not selling value. So they say, okay, uh, you have a BSc in uh, accountancy. Okay, we shall pay you 200000 a month. And he's happy. He's selling his hours. He must work eight hours. But he's truly worth more than that. Sell value, not time. When you sell value, you have shown people you can't buy my time. I'm bigger than what you can pay. Praise God. Sell, sell, sell. Number 11. No, no, when sell, he said go. Then the man of God said go sell the oil. Pay your debt. And you and your son shall live on the rest. Stop being a consumer. God established selling as a proper way to prosper. Please, when this conference is over, look for something to be selling. And not only sell in one spot. Sell in several places. And God will prosper you. Look for what you can package. And sell. I like you to say package. Oh please say it louder. Package. Even just talking package itself. When you buy orange juice. <laughs> you see that box. In which the orange juice is. Raoul's Rousing. That's the name of the man. That's all he did. He invented that box. Where they pour cheese, uh, orange juice, and all those orange juice. The man who invented that box is called Raoul's Rousing. He just died about three, four years ago. He was worth about 10 billion pounds. What did he do? He created a box. So anywhere anyone wants to use that box, they send royalty to him. Look for what you can package and sell. Joseph sold an idea. He said, look for the person who can manage what will come in the seven years of plenty and who can then manage the coming economic disaster. And the king said, we don't have anyone. It's you that will do it. You brought the idea. Manage the idea. Rico Talib from one day of being a prisoner to being second man in an empire. Egypt was not a country. It was an empire. It's not possible to get that kind of promotion unless by the favor of God and the idea you have. Somebody today, you are rising in a meteoric way. Shout a powerful amen. So Joseph sold to the Pharaoh. He sold the idea. So uncover the value of what you have so people can give you the money they have. Uncover the value of what you have so people can give you the money they have. Why didn't we just sell the bush on Lake Echo Express? Why are we pouring money just to create road? Just the road, the 28 roads is costing us almost 2 billion naira. 28 roads. We are raising the value. Uncover the value of what you have so people can give you the money they have. Number 11, settle the tribute. Settle your debts. Settle the tribute. Everyone you owe. There are some debts you should settle. If you owe the bank, pay them on time. If you owe people, pay them on time. Even if you borrow to do the business, find a way to quickly pay them off. Because banks, banks and government Ha, ah, God help us. Banks and government are Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. They like to take everything you have, pay them off on time. Somebody shout, Amen. Number 12. I like to finish quick. I know I've taken quite some time. Number 12. Save the rest. Save the rest. Save the rest. When I use the word save here, I had to use a word that just flows with others. 
I meant invest the rest. Don't put money where it is dormant because you can easily reach it. You know, one of the things about savings account is that you can just go and collect your money. Put your money where you cannot easily collect. Buy things that may be slow to sell, but the day they jump, they change your story. When I was buying, first land I bought in Moe, 30 acres was 900,000 naira. 30 acres was 900,000 naira. I got the sea of all. In the days of the military, Colonel Shasha Enion, one time governor of the state, 1991 or 92, I think 91, he signed the first year of old. Then suddenly, the value changed. You see, I had investors. So invest the rest. Invest the rest. Anybody who's here today who heard me, I'm not saying you should go and resign from where you work at the moment. But start even from there. Create a principle of 50, 30, 20. 50, 30, 20. 50, 30, 20. If you're on a, a low salary, 50, 30, 20. 50% 50 in all your expenses. Pata, pata, 50%. 30% saving or putting in generational wealth. 20 to God. If you are a high-end earner who has no less than 5 million naira coming in every month, and you, you don't have any expenses anymore other than food. The house belongs to you. And five million is coming in. And you only need food, petrol for your car. Change it to 70, 20, 10. 70, 20, 10. 70% 70 in high-end investment. 20% to God. Just live on 10%. 70 on high-end investment because you don't need to spend. Look at the houses. I said I'm buying for my children, my grandchildren. The one, and I was paying little by little, which you pay little by little for one year, two year, three year, all those lucky uh, projects. The one I paid and bought 45, 000, 45 million. Before I finished, it had become 65 million. They handed the key last week. Another two is ready from one company. And the days when I was paying for it, it was 35 million. They had some issues, they made it 40 million. It is now worth 60 million. So even without doing anything, before they even finish, before they even give me the key, it has multiplied itself. So save the rest, be an investor. Create generational wealth. Many of us will not be where we are today if our parents were investors. If they didn't eat the seed, and the food. Lastly, thank you very much for your patience. Number 13, sustain your future. Sustain your future. Man of God told her, live on the rest. Stop waiting for God to give you what he already gave you. Stop waiting for God to give you what he already gave you. Leave an inheritance for your children. An inheritance for your children. Leave an inheritance for them. Bless your grandchildren. Bless your children. Bless your wife. And if the woman is the one who is bringing in the income, don't rub it in. Bless your husband. I tell my wife, choose two places you want to go every year. Anywhere she chooses, she gets the ticket and $10,000 to go spend there. Yeah, she married me when there was no money in the account. And I was living in a single room. And then when we wedded, we wedded into a boy's quarter. Even the boy's quarter, it had two rooms and a parlor. Shomolu Four Square said they can't pay for two room and parlor. They only pay for room and parlor. Shomolu Four Square. They only pay for room and parlor. They said they can't pay for two rooms. So that time, two room and parlor was 100 naira. They said they can't pay. So anybody who believed in you when you had nothing, they must be carrying grace to have been in your life and you prospered. One of the greatest dangers of some men is that when God prospers them, as they buy a new model car, they are looking for a new model wife. I close this teaching today. 
I believe you have received something. If you've been blessed, somebody give God praise. Give God praise. I'd like you to stand on your feet, please. I want you to lift your hand and say, Father, I receive the grace and the favor for prosperity. I declare and decree I will walk in prosperity. I will walk in increase. I will walk in uncommon favor. Lift your voice and begin to pray for such breakthrough. Increase, uncommon favor, blessing to rest on you, prosperity to follow you. Today is the poorest you will ever be. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus, Father, in the brevity of the time that I had, seed has been sown into the minds of your people. Let from this meeting today, let your people emerge into prosperity. Let them walk in increase. Let them walk in favor. Let them walk in abundance. Let them experience grace. Let prosperity answer to them. Let unusual prosperity answer to them. Let their hands handle wealth. Today, like the woman shut the door, we shut the door against limitation. We shut the door against the enemy. We shut the door against the lies of Satan. We shut the door against every limitation of the enemy. I declare to the life of this man and woman, please say a better amen. Favor that produces promotion will follow you. Raises will follow you. Bonuses will follow you. For those in business, contracts will come to you. Sales and commission will be your portion. For those who are tithers in this house, the windows of heaven will open upon you. I declare you will be a lender, not just a borrower. Favor again answers to you. You will live a debt-free life. Increase follows you. Testimony follows you. Blessing follows you. From this day, increase follows you. There are people in this hall today I speak into your life. I declare into your life. You will be the evidence of the goodness of God. The evidence of God's provision. The evidence of God's provision. Someone in this hall who said, if God blesses me, I will serve his kingdom. May you be a kingdom financier. The goodness of the Lord will rest on you. Abundance will surround you. Abundance will overtake you. Abundance will overwhelm your life. Increase to the left. Increase to the right. Zalush Kayim Maruda Zinaba. You will walk in money miracles. 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 The day of supernatural overflow is coming into your life. God did not run out of supply. The woman ran out of container. God did not run out of supply. The woman ran out of container. From today, you will not just have a container. You will be a conduit of blessing. A container has capacity. A conduit has continuous flow. From today, continuous flow. Of abundance in your life. Shout amen with power. Amen. Give God a praise if you were blessed. Please, in the presence of the Lord. A teaching like this cannot be complete. Without making you to learn. You see many believers do not realize. That one of the ways to connect with grace. Is to do something unusual. Take a step you've never taken. Break the power of the enemy. You heard of a seed. And you took the step. One day I was taking a walk in the estate I said I live in. Just recently. And the woman. She was waiting outside her door. I think she's expecting a guest. 
She's just moving to their own house. They've just finished building. They too have a, a lagoon view like me. My house, I have a lagoon view. I can just walk into the lagoon. Uh, they also have just built. When she saw me, she was screaming. She said, Pastor Matthew, this house is a product of the seed I sowed. When you call for a seed, I said, tell me the story. I like to share it with other people. And then she told me that when Elevation Church, there's a church on Lake Hebrew Express called Elevation. When they just started, Godman had invited me to speak and I asked people to sow seed. And she responded. She said, boom, her story changed. And that's how the flow came that made this house to be possible. Somebody give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. Talking about Godman's church. Talking about Godman's church. There was a young man in the service on the same day the woman had a breakthrough. Whom when I asked people to sow a seed. To experience a 24 hour miracle. They, they had withheld his, his payment after he had been laid off from a bank. They had withheld his money for a long time. As, and this day I was speaking for God man was a Saturday he came out and placed the seed on the altar as he was driving home on a Saturday six months back dated salary hit his phone somebody give God praise I said give God praise give God praise so I'm going to call for two seed this morning then I'm going to pray and everyone else will sow. But never, never exclude yourself from the power of a seed. The first seed is a seed of multiplication. If anybody told you zero has no value, they haven't put many zero behind one. One and one zero is only ten. But when you put another zero, it becomes hundred. Praise God. So God is about to multiply someone. All I want the first people to sow is the seed of a hundred dollars, which is your connection to multiplication coming upon your life. Multiplication coming upon your life. Multiplication coming upon your life. Hundred dollars. I just told you my stories. My story in the same Shomul, in the same Lagos, and it is the same Lagos that today. <laughs> I'm building on 88 acres and uh, 28 streets. We're building our own streets. We're operating like a local government. And we're creating something that had not been seen in Nigeria. If Dubai says Nigerians cannot come, they will come to our own Dubai. That's what we want to build. So $100. Just come out. Don't wait for anybody. Come out quickly. And I'm going to pray for you. Quick, 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 quick. Quick. Quickly. 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 Quick. I want you to believe God as you are coming. That you are connecting to grace. You are connecting to a new season. You are connecting to testimony. And you are connecting to favor. Nakadu shikali rebarodizia. Rina matu ngede doshka edere borozia. Rino tali brado senke tali reba. Ridoshka edi brodi kesetai. Ramo sukaida. <laughs> the same 24 hour miracle seed I challenged him at elevation to sow and that young man got his breakthrough on his way then the pastor himself God man Akilabi saw me he said Pastor Matthew Pastor Matthew I, this 24 hour miracle thing I've never seen anything like it I said what happened he saw I was preaching for Bishop Jakes at, lead, at his leadership conference and uh, God man had attended he said sir I experienced the same 24 hour miracle he, he said one of his members just looked at me and said Pastor we're always giving our testimony. We've never had yours. And he said, uh, okay, pastor, what kind of car do you drive? He said, I drive one. He said, go to Koscharis and point at any Land Rover product you like. Brand new. Range Rover, Land Rover, whatever. So, uh, Godman went and pointed at a fully loaded Land Rover and they delivered it to his house. He said, this 24 miracles, sir. This is something else. Praise God. 
those who are sowing seed of 24,000 naira, I want you to be the, at the extreme right, at the extreme right, just get up and go stand there. That's your own sacrifice. And there are some people who want to sow this $100 seed and the 24 hour miracle seed. If you are the person who is doing the double double, you stand on the extreme left. If you are doing double double, you stand on the extreme left. left. It's a new season. Somebody is about to change their story. And they're about to see tears wiped. And a new song sung. You want to sow both. You stand on the extreme. Those who are sowing the 24,000 naira, you stand on the extreme right. Those who are sowing both the $100 and the 24,000, you stand on the extreme left. I'm about to pray. If you are coming, you come out quickly. I believe that you are sowing into one of the best grounds when it comes to spiritual grounds in Nigeria. Some of you who are seated, you need to tell yourself, I must stretch. This is how to enter my blessing. You can't, you see, God has to have something to bless. Deuteronomy 28, verse 5 to 12. He wants to give you either the blessing of the hand, a basket, or a storehouse. And you are going to move. Something is going to change in your life. Something is going to happen. Favor is going to come. Grace is going to come. Blessing is going to come. Testimony is going to come. Someone ought to be here because the seed you are about to sow is going to bring you out of every embarrassment. Shout amen with power. I saw a video on TikTok the other day by the singer, the old woman, Bola Are. How, being a singer, she also built a church around K2. Couldn't roof. So she went to someone to loan her money. She roofed the church. And then she couldn't pay. The guy began to harass her. And she was promising she would pay. She had gone out to minister on her way back. Only to get there and see a vehicle going away. They told her, that's the guy you owe money who came with about nine police. For just about 14,000 naira in those days. And she was to wax a record on the day. As she entered the studio, she said, the waxing of the record was a combination of tears and singing. Tears and singing. And she wrote on that day a new song. Uh, uh, what, I can't remember the title of the song, the, the song now. Shubankam Benyayimi, one but in my life. And she turned it to a song. While she was inside the cubicle, and finishing as she came out, they said, Mama, and somebody came here. He said he's looking for you. He brought so and so amount of dollars. And when they calculate is the amount of paper the room. She said, where is he? This, uh, he just stepped there. They went and opened the door. They can't find him. Angels are going to visit your case. I said, angels are going to visit your case. Somebody is going to have strange breakthroughs. Strange favors. Strange open doors. Blessings are coming into your hand. Properties you never built. They are coming into your hand. As you're standing at this altar, lift your hand. And I want you, those for 24 hour miracle, tell God in the next 24 hours and in cycles of 24 hours, let him turn things around. Those who are trusting God for $100 seed, who are bringing the $100 seed, multiplied, multiplied, scaling, scaled, scaled favor, scaled breakthrough, scaled testimony, scaled favor, scaled breakthrough, scaled testimony. Come on, Tali, Koro, Skiereba. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Rikabalo shata yeke koseke. Rararo seka leriba. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Nakabaro shetaya. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Father, today I speak your blessing upon your people. Let today be the poorest they will ever be. Let the testimony flow. Let the favor flow. Let the grace flow. Let the turnaround follow. In the next 24 hours. In cycles of 24 hours. For the rest of this year. And the coming year. 24 hour open doors. 24 hour turnaround. 24 hour breakthroughs, 24 hour change, 24 hour testimony.
is coming into your life. A season of change is here. A season of change is here. And I speak into the life of every man and woman who is releasing the hundred dollar seed. May you experience multiplied favor. Multiplied blessing. Multiplied increase. Grace upon grace. And blessing upon blessing. Everything you step into today which is favor, increase, breakthrough. You will not step out of it. Rather you are stepping into a new dimension. And you are stepping into a new season. We shut the door of failure and lack. We open the door of a new season. So shall it be. Jesus name. Shout amen with power. I like everyone who have the full seed. Bring it. Everyone who has the seed who has the altar. Please place it on the altar. Even if it is some of it. Bring it to place on the altar. You have the full seed. You can put it in my hand. Everyone who is in the church. Everyone. Get up. Everyone, get up. Take an offering. Let's not wait for the ushers. Everyone who is seated, take an offering. Bring it to the altar. You are walking away from yesterday. Nebruzia. Merutalikazi. Ma etusie anti leburudish. For the sacrifice that you have done, the Lord opens a new season, a new door, and a new testimony. In the place where the enemy have fought you, God gives you a testimony. Amen. Change has come. In Jesus' name. Can place it on the altar. Blessing and favor on you. In the name of Jesus, new season. Blessing and favor, new season. Jesus' name. Be blessed, be favored from today. New season. Jesus' name. Be blessed, be favored from today. New season. Be blessed, be favored from today. New season. Blessing and favor on you. Your tears are wiped. Your tears are wiped. Blessing and favor. In Jesus' name. Blessing and favor. In Jesus' name. It's a new season. It's a new day. In Jesus' name. Blessing and favor. In Jesus' name. Be blessed. Be favored. New season. In Jesus' name. Today is the beginning of a new beginning. Full seed, full seed. Bless and favor on common testimony. Today is the beginning of a new season. Jesus' name. Bless this morning on common grace, on common increase. Rest and peace. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I see God raising your platform, changing your levels, bringing an increase, giving you a voice. I see your aspirations and your desire becoming reality. I see the world coming to your house to rejoice. It shall happen. Blessing and favor. A common testimony. Beyond measure. In Jesus' name. Be blessed. Favor on you. Strength. In Jesus name. All right. Be blessed. Be favored. Be lifted. In Jesus name. Blessing and favor. Tears wiped and testimony following. In Jesus name. Be blessed. Be favored. In Jesus name. Blessing and favor. And common grace. A new season. A new day. What you thought was dropped or taken from you, God restores. God restores. God restores. Jesus' name. Blessing and favor. Jesus' name. Full seed, please. Blessing and favor. Jesus' name. And common increase. A new season. A new season. Male Shakai Mavros, the sound of laughter in your house. Blessing and favor, Jesus' name. Blessing and favor, Jesus' name. Blessing and favor, Jesus' name. Kayetoso, Katekeko, Riko Tata Kapaka. Are you a pastor? What do you do? 
that they have put. Okay, speak blessing on your life. Speak grace on you. Speak on common over you. In Jesus' name. Bless them favor. Be blessed be highly favored from today. Change is coming. Bless them favor. In Jesus' name. Be blessed. Be favored. Be lifted. In Jesus' name. Bless them favor. Kabarosa. Nish. Ekos. New season. In Jesus' name. Be blessed. Makare Shukriya. Jesus' name. From today. Blessing and favor. Rest on your life. New season. New season. Jesus' name. Blessing. Testimonies. Grace upon grace. Jesus' name. Legidia. Rotakabos. Everything that looks like a setback, God will give you a comeback. A total comeback. In Jesus' name. Amen. Blessings. Be blessed, be favored, be lifted beyond measure. In Jesus' name. Blessing and favor beyond measure. In Jesus' name. Blessing, favor on you. In Jesus' name. Lord, increase on this lady. Tears wiped. Laughter in your house. Be blessed. A new season. A new season. A new season. A new season. I see people gather in your house to sell. Blessing and favor on your Jesus' name. Blessings. It's a new day. New testimony. Blessed and favored. Last ones, blessing and favor on you from today. New season. Blessing and favor. New season. Change is coming. And I'm supposed to tell you, you will not carry your burden alone. What looks like a load, you will not carry alone. In Jesus' name. Somebody give God praise. God bless you. Thank you very much. The suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. God is talking about the manifest presence of God. Everyone say it, manifest presence. If there was anything that will help us in these last days with the activities of the devil on the increase, is the exceeding glory of God.